All right, now let's take a look at number six. By looking at the question, you see a, you see a sigma notation. You, from part B, you also see, so uh, the sign infinite sign, so it's infinite geometric series. All right, so this is questions on sequence and series. First of all, understand what a sigma notation means, right? Sigma notation, it's a summation sign, so it's a sum. And the R value starts at one, goes to N. And every single term, you're gonna sub in the R value into this general formula, which is two third multiplied by seven over eight to the power of R. Part A of the question say, find the first term. Well, even though this is a sum, but when you put R equal to one, you're really finding the sum of one term. Well, sum of one term is really just U1. So U1 is equal to the sum of one terms which means you put one into the function or the general formula, two third times seven over eight. That's gonna give you um, 14 over 24, or if you reduce it, seven over 12. All right, so that's your A value or U1. Um, then part B asks you to find the sum of the infinite geometric series, which is U1 divided by one minus R. So I need a common ratio. Now you can really by inspection here and you see, you know, when R is equal to one, you put a one there, R equals two, you put a two there, R equals three, you put a three there. So every single term you multiply by an extra seven over eight. So you can tell just by inspection, R is seven over eight. If you don't see that, what you can also do is you can find uh, what's be a bit, you will be a bit more work. You can find, you can put a two in there, find the sum of two terms, right? Subtract the first term, which will give you the second term, and then take the second term and divide by the first term, which would also give you the R value. But that's a lot more work, right? I wouldn't really recommend that. Okay, so now that we have the R value, we have U1, we can find the sum. So U1 is seven over 12. This is one minus seven over eight. So this is one over eight. So we flip, you're gonna be multiplied by eight. Um, you get 14 over three, right? or you can use the calculator, punch in the calculator. So the sum of the infinite geometric series is 14 over three. Okay, part C, find the least value of N such that the sum of the infinite geometric series minus the sum up to the value of N is less than 0 0.001, okay? Now this, part is the infinite geometric series, which we already got the answer, 14 over three. This part is the sum of not infinite, it's a sum of a finite geometric series. So you have to use the other formula, right? The sum of n terms, let's see, we want this minus that is less than 0 0.001. This we already is 14 over three. This is the tricky part. The sum of n terms is going to be um, u1 times 1 minus r all to the power of n divided by 1 over 1 minus r. So in this particular case, what is u1? Well, u1 is 7 over 12. 1 minus 7 over 8 to the power of n, all divided by one minus seven over eight. So that's the sum of n terms. And this must be less than 0 0.001, okay? The easier way, easiest way to deal with this question is right now, put it in a grabbing calculator. You call this side y1, you call that side y2, 
and find where they meet each other. Okay, you may want to simplify a little bit, but if you type this in as it is into the graphing calculator, your graphing calculator will take care of it. Okay. Once you have the two graphs, again, um, I look at the Y2 and the 0 0.001. I like to make my Y min be zero, my Y max would be 0 0.002, then 0 0.01 would be right in the middle of your graph. The 0 0.01 would be right in the middle of your graph. And it's easy to find the point of intersection that way. And then the other one would be your, uh, your, you know, your, your, um, your graph. And you need to find where they intersect. I think this one you should be, it would be somewhat of decreasing graph, right? It's going to come down. So where they meet is what you want to find. Again, find pointing point of intersection, the second trace five, enter, enter, enter. And if you do this correctly, the point of intersection should be at 63.2675. Okay, so that means the 63rd term, the N value, would be still a little bit bigger than 0 0.001. The 64th term is going to be smaller than 0 0.001. So the question say, when is the first term that's going to be less than 0 0.001? So the answer would be the 64th term. N equals to 64 would be the correct answer. 